In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a 36 volt, 180 watt power supply from inexpensive parts that you can get on Amazon. There are a lot of power supplies out there that you can purchase, but they're pretty expensive. And although the accuracy of this power supply won't be as good, it's still very much usable for everyday projects. To build it, we're going to need the following components. I'll leave links to each in the description below. 180 watt AC to DC switching power supply. An adjustable step-down converter where the voltage and current can be adjusted using potentiometers. This step-down converter is going to provide power for the main power supply load. A smaller buck converter to power the electronics, like the display and fan. An AC socket with an on-off switch and a built-in fuse. A voltmeter and ammeter for the display. Some potentiometers with knobs that we can turn by hand. Some 12-volt computer fans. Some banana plug terminals for the output. And some rubber feet. We're going to connect everything as follows. First, we'll connect the live neutral and ground wires of the AC plug to the input of the power supply. The power supply actually has four outputs, two for negative and two for positive. We'll connect the first pair to the small buck converter for the electronics, and then we'll connect the second pair to the main buck converter for the power circuit. The output of the small buck converter will go directly to the fan. We're also going to remove the two small potentiometers on the main buck converter and replace them with the potentiometers that we can operate by hand. Next, we'll connect the positive side of the banana plug terminal to the positive output terminal of the buck converter. Then the negative side of the output terminal of the buck converter will go directly to the negative terminal of the display. Then the positive side of the power terminal of the display is going to go directly to the negative terminal on the banana plug. Then we'll connect the yellow ammeter wire to the positive terminal of the banana plug. Then finally, we'll connect the small positive and negative power leads of the display to the positive and negative output terminals of the small buck converter. And here's the complete schematic. I'll leave a link to an image version of this down in the description. Here I'm designing the 3D printed case. The bottom of the case has vent holes and mounting holes for each one of the components. It also has a place where I'll be able to screw the rubber feet into place. I'm 3D printing this using PETG, which has a higher melting point and better resistance to UV light. I designed the top of the case to be longer rather than wider with the display on the shorter side. This didn't work out so well as you'll see later and I had to redesign and print the case. Good thing too, because this print really didn't come out that great. Here's the bottom of the enclosure with the power supply and buck converters in place. And now it's time to connect the components. And now it's time to power everything and adjust the potentiometer on the small buck converter to 12 volts because that's what we need to power the fan and the display. I have the fan connected here as well and now it's time to connect all the rest of the components and give this a test run. And now that everything is connected, we can turn this on and hopefully nothing will explode. Nice. You can see the fan is running and here I'm just adjusting the potentiometer for the voltage. This is how we're going to be adjusting the output voltage of the power supply, but we're going to swap the potentiometer out for one that we can use with a knob. And at this point, I just wanted to stop and say thank you to all my fans. My only fans, to be honest. If you like this kind of content, please leave a like down below. Okay, so now we're going to remove the potentiometers from the buck converter just by heating up the solder on the other side and pulling with a set of pliers. We'll put some solder back on those pads and then we'll solder the wires from the 10K potentiometers, one for the voltage and one for the current. It's kind of tricky to solder these wires on because normally you'd be able to go all the way through the board and solder them on the other side. So here I just have to heat up the solder and melt it into the wire itself. And just keep in mind when you're soldering wires, you definitely want to pre-tin the wires before you connect them. Because what happens is if you leave just bare wire, 
that bare wire is going to absorb the solder on the pad and it's going to go into the wire instead of you know staying in place and making a secure connection and now we have the potentiometer wire soldered in place next we'll connect the wires to the potentiometers themselves And here we have the buck converter with the new potentiometer swapped in. And here I'm using a multimeter instead of the display, but as you can see, when I turn the potentiometer, the voltage changes. Next, it's time to place all the components in the enclosure, but the display, I did not have an easy time fitting this into the hole. Here it is. And as you can see, the 3D print did not come out great. So uh, it's probably a good thing that I redesigned it. Here I'm splicing together the yellow current ammeter wire and the main power wire to connect to the positive terminal of the banana plug. And here are all the components connected and mounted in place before the enclosure is closed. Then finally we can add the rubber feet. And it's kind of ugly. Like I said, the 3D print did not come out great and I, as I was using it, the long form factor was just not convenient. But it does work. So I decided to redesign the enclosure and give it some features like I have the face sort of mounted at an angle, which is more convenient. I put some lettering there and also I put a place to store some stuff in the top. So, you know, you have all the space, you don't want to put it to waste. So here it is. I think it looks a lot better and the 3D print came out much better. So definitely a good result. Now all I have to do is take everything apart, which is always very tedious and then put it back into the new enclosure. But at least the display fit better this time. And here it is, the voltage is working, it looks a lot better. Here I am using the power supply to do some very important scientific research. All right, thanks a lot for watching. If you wanna build this, I'm gonna leave links to all of the components in the description, as well as links to the SDL files.